What's good, guys? Fantasy Joe back here with some more fantasy football content, bringing you my week nine wide receiver rankings, half point PPR, as always. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Stick around for the rest of the season. Bring home that title. If uh, Hit that like button. And if you have any questions or comments, any start sits, any trade advice, leave them in the comment section down below. I respond to all comments. Let's hop into these rankings. At number one, I've got Cooper Cup. He is the number one receiver going against the worst defense. So, yeah, fire him up. Um, not that you weren't playing him. Terry Kill against Green Bay. You're playing him, of course. Debo Samuel against Arizona. Uh, smash play. Strong week last week against Chicago. A.J. Brown has been on an absolute tear. I'm playing him for sure against the Rams. And I expect the Tennessee Titans to be more pass-heavy moving forward without Derrick Henry, which could benefit him. Although I do, they do expect to have Julio Jones back, who I will talk about later this week. Uh, Jamar Chase against Cleveland at 5. I think he could have a really good game. Six, Devontae Adams against Kansas City. You might be thinking, why is Devontae Adams so high on this list with Aaron Rodgers out with COVID? But uh, Devontae Adams has actually done surprisingly well without Aaron Rodgers in his career. He's just a great wide receiver. I think he's on a, a different level right now, especially. Um, so I think he's still a top 10 play moving forward. This week, uh, I think it would match up with Kansas City. Uh, seven, Justin Jefferson against Baltimore. Eight, Stefan Diggs against Jacksonville. I uh, think he could go on a real heater over the second half of the season. Sort of catching a few more touchdowns. Sort of having some more bountiful fantasy weeks. <clears throat> One second. <laughs> Nine, Mike Williams against Philly. I'm back in this Mike Williams Flames. Uh, Philly's not the best matchup, but I still think Mike Williams is going to get it going in a major way for fantasy very soon. He'd be a guy I'd be trying to acquire. 10, C.D. Lamb against who are the uh, Denver. I don't know why that's not in there. Um, must have not been using my brain when I filled this out earlier. Uh, so, yeah, C.D. Lamb plays Denver this week. I think he's a top 10 play moving forward. I think he gets Dak back, and it'll be very good for him. Although, Cooper Rush filled in just fine last week for them. 11, Deontay Johnson against Chicago. He's getting a ton of targets and a solid matchup this week. I think he'll have a good game. And I think he in the end zone. DJ Moore at 12 against New England. I know it hasn't been good, and I do think that they might focus solely on him, honestly. Um, Got to hope that McCaffrey is back, though, and that could really help open things up for him. 13, Keenan Allen against Philly. Uh, he's another guy I would try to acquire still. I think he's going to have a very strong second half of the season. He hasn't been bad. Just look at the stats that he's actually been putting up. He's been really solid for fantasy, and he's a great wide receiver, and he will be moving forward. 14, Adam Thielen against Baltimore. He carries a ton of touchdown upside every single week. Marquise Brown against Minnesota. I think people are sleeping too much on Marquise Brown right now, honestly. Um, he's a great wide receiver. He's been really good when he's played. I think him and um, Lamar are going to get back on that wavelength. I know Bateman's back, and now there's more targets or more people to absorb those targets, but I still think Marquise Brown's the one on this team. Uh, all right, 17, no, 16. Michael Pittman Jr. against the New York Jets. He'd be a lot higher. I just don't know how much the Colts are going to have to throw in that, the end of the second half of that game. Um, but yeah, you're definitely playing Michael Pittman every single week, honestly. He's a great player. Uh, 17, Amari Cooper against Denver. Uh, I keep an eye on his hamstring. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Maybe they have him miss a week just to see if he can get right again. Uh, 18, Brandon Cooks against Miami. Great matchup for him. Uh, and Brandon Cooks is a good wide receiver. 19, Devontae Booker against Houston. I think he's going to have a good week. I see, could see this being a close game, too. Uh, I think Devontae Booker is going to get a good amount of targets. Has a good touchdown upside because he's just so big. Uh, so, yeah. I've got him inside my top 20. DeAndre Hopkins at 20. This is a bit of a hedge just because I don't know if he's going to play or not with that hamstring injury. He played on Thursday night, though, so he's had some extra days to get some rest, so keep an eye on that. Um, but, yeah. 21, Cortland Sutton against Dallas. Dallas is a good matchup for him. Um, yeah, I think people are sleeping on him a little bit too much. Jerry Judy is not completely back yet, so I'm firing up Cortland Sutton for sure this week. 10, Robert, or no, 10, what am I saying? 22, Robert Woods against Tennessee. Wasn't great receiving-wise last week, but saved his week with a rushing touchdown. He gets a few of those every year. Um, 
I'm playing Robert Woods in a great matchup, and I think this could potentially be a shootout on Sunday night if Tennessee can get things going through the air. 23, T. Higgins against Cleveland. And almost 100 yards last week. Uh, I think you can play T. Higgins moving forward basically every week. 24, Emmanuel Sanders against Jacksonville. I know he dudded last week and everyone's bummed, but I still think you can throw him in your lineup. He's still running a bunch of routes. Um, I'm playing Emmanuel Sanders still. Chase Claypool, 25. Good matchup for him against Chicago. Uh, is that big play coming? He's had, honestly, he's been fairly solid, scoring about eight points or a game or a little bit right around that range when he doesn't score a touchdown half point PPR, which doesn't absolutely kill you. And he's got a big ceiling. Um, so you could do worse than Chase Claypool as a wide receiver two this week. 26, clear is Tony against Las Vegas. Uh, Sterling Shepard out. He could get a ton of targets. We don't know if um, Kenny Galladay is going to play either or Saquon Barkley. So like I said, a ton of targets could be coming Katarius Tony's way in a nice matchup. 27, Jacoby Myers against Carolina. I think that they're going to try... The Carolina Panthers are going to try to stop the run game of the New England Patriots. I think they'll open up a few receptions for Jacoby Myers, who's been heavily targeted all year. 28, who I spoke about earlier, Julio Jones against the Rams. I think Julio is a trade target as well. I think you buy him super cheap right now. I think there's going to be more targets in this Tennessee Titans offense all of a sudden. And I still think he's a good wide receiver. So I think go out and get Julio if you're wide receiver needy. Um, I think you could buy him for pennies on the dollar, maybe 60 cents on the dollar. 29, Hunter Renbro against the Giants. He's going to absorb more targets with the uh, unfortunate news about Henry Ruggs. Um, he's done. He's not going to be a Raider anymore. So Renbro, a lot more targets this week. 30, Jarvis Landry against Cincinnati. Um, another guy, Odell, they say he's not on the team anymore. I don't know what all that's about, but I think Jarvis Landry will absorb some more targets because of it in a good matchup against Cincinnati. If you guys have made it at this point in the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll respond as always, like I said earlier. Until next time, this is Fancy Joe. Thanks for watching.